Good morning. I'm somewhat disheveled because I wasn't going to film today and then I was like, screw it, whatever. I'll film today because yesterday I meal prepped some dishes and I thought, well, why not show how to actually like integrate meal prep into a day in a way that's not boring? Because so many people get the idea that if you do meal prep, you have to eat the same breakfast, the same lunch, the same dinner. So maybe you guys can walk away with some recipe inspiration or something from this. I'd also like to thank the lovely folks over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I'll tell you guys more about them at the end. And for now, let's talk more about food. Also quickly, I wanted to say thank you everyone who has left such sweet comments on my recent videos. Um, I love being able to sit and chat with you guys in the comments. I know I don't always get to them like straight away because it just depends on my schedule and like when I've blocked out time to sit and do comments. But I really appreciate how so many of you are so sweet. So today I am working on some stuff for my coaching clients and there's a little project that I've been working on as well which I'll show you guys more a little bit further on. But I need to start my day with breakfast because I'm going to the gym soon. Now you don't have to do this but what I like to do is pretty much put all my day's carbs around my gym session, like my, my starchy carbohydrates. Uh, it's just to do with my PCOS. Um, my body just doesn't work as well with them as some other people, unfortunately. Um, so this morning I am having some surprise surprise protein oats. The way that I like to meal prep these is I like to prep the base of the meal because then you can change up the toppings depending on what you feel like that day. And I know some people don't like the texture of protein in oats, but that's going to depend on one, the protein powder that you're using and two, the method that you cook it. There's a few different methods. There's stove top, there's microwave, or there's like boiling water method, which is what I've been using for quite a while now. So what I like to do is in a container to make my like prep, I'll, I'll keep them in the cupboard and I use half a cup of rolled oats, a scoop of protein powder, sometimes some erythritol and then a spice mix which has cinnamon, nutmeg and cloves. Today I think what I'm going to do is heat up some frozen blueberries and I'm literally just going to microwave them and pour them on top because then they have like the juice and stuff and I'm also going to put in some almond flakes because I like to add a little bit of fats on top too. The way I like to cook mine is just putting a dry mix in a bowl, slowly add in boiling water, you probably only need about half a cup worth and just stir that through until it's the texture you want and then let the oats sit in the boiling water because it will soften them. So don't just eat them straight away, just let them sit for a couple of minutes before you eat them. somewhat alive looking. Now I'm gonna make a post-training meal. So this for me is always gonna be pretty high in protein, high in carbohydrates, and not tons of fat, but like a, a decent amount. The reason for this is we wanna make sure that our body is in a positive glycogen, which is carbohydrates and nitrogen, which is found in protein balance. Now I put this chicken in the fridge to marinate yesterday. So I sort of like half prepped it because I wanted to cook it fresh today and I wanted to cook the potatoes fresh today You'll see why soon, but let's just flash back to yesterday really quick and I'll show you the marinade that I make for the chicken.
Okay, now what I'm going to do for the potatoes is I'm going to take some red Kipling potatoes, so they're like the little red ones, and firstly I'm going to boil them for about 8 to 10 minutes. When they're soft, you know that they're able to come off the stove. And then what I like to do is I put them in the grill to pretty much just take a line of baking tray, pop them on there, and then there's this paste which I make. So it's a mixture of olive oil, parmesan, salt, and garlic. And I like to take a pastry brush and just paint it on top of the potatoes. And they're gonna sit in the grill for about 10 to 12 minutes. Halfway through, we're gonna roll them over and we're gonna use the pastry brush to paint the rest of that mixture on the potatoes. I love making the potatoes like this because they go so crispy on the outside and still soft on the inside. Now I'm also gonna cook some greens. I'm just gonna cook them in some water and when the potatoes are done, I'm gonna pull them out and I'm just gonna take I know this is gonna sound real bougie, but I love it. Just like a few drops, like you really don't need much, just a few tiny drops of truffle oil on top of the potatoes. Oh Thank my you. god, the truffle oil mixed with the parmesan is amazing. Hello, yes, it's me on my computer again. Um, it's been a couple of hours since I ate that post-training meal and I've just been typing up training programs for my clients. Like I said, just a lot of client work today. But I prepped these little sushi rolls yesterday. I'll show you how I make them. Also, oh my god, um, I don't know why, but when I was logged off Instagram for a few weeks, I made a TikTok account. Now, I'm not funny, I can't dance, I'm nearly 30 years old, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I was thinking I just wanna make cute, chill little videos. It's the same as my name on here, just Rachel Ost, if anyone wants to um, come join me on there. I'm gonna record some of them and I might make a little stockpile and then probably start posting them on there. I never thought I would say those words in my life. So I've been really liking this as a little snack lately. So I've got protein from my salmon. I've got some fats from my avocado as well as a little bit of fiber. And then I've got this nori sheet and nori actually has lots of complex vitamins in it as well. I know it's not legitimate sushi, but it's just yum. I had to get changed again because I was filming something else and I wanted the like puffy sleeves contrasting with the tattoos. I don't know, I like the juxtaposition of like the, the really soft and feminine and then like all the black ink. I've been sitting on this project for a little bit. So there's two things that I've been working on. One I've had to push back, but I did want to get this project up in the next couple of months. And it's something that I'm working on. It is a low sugar dessert ebook. So 
I haven't done an ebook in a while and I know so many of you guys love the nutrition guide and you love the home training program and I was like I'm gonna put together just desserts like it's all just desserts but I wanted to make stuff that's still really delicious because I love being able to give my clients options like this for things like it's not even a treat you can include it as a regular part of your meals as a regular part of your week because the nutritional profile is so good on these foods today I'm working on a caramel cheesecake recipe I love cheesecake for anyone who doesn't know like I'm not a huge sweet tooth but if I was to pick a few things it would be definitely cheesecake and probably apple pie so this is going to be a little sneak preview of one of the recipes which is going to be in the ebook I'm thinking about putting a sneak little discount code into my email list the newsletter list um, when it does go live so if you're not on my newsletter and you do want to be jump on over to my blog which is eatrunlift.me you'll see a little sign up button there's a free pdf when you join as well but I'll send the discount out through that way when it's launched. Here are my base ingredients and I'm essentially just gonna combine them, make sure the butter is melted. Gonna combine them with my Nutribullet. If you want the whole recipe written out in one place, I've actually put together a blog post for it as well. So you can find that linked in the description box. Just so if you wanna read it all in one place rather than having to scribble out notes from the video, you can do that. You want to bake the base and then what I'm doing is mixing my gelatin into some boiling water and you're just going to mix it through completely and then I'm going to pop the gelatin in the freezer to cool down a little bit. Now I'm just going to mix my filling with a hand mixer and I'm going to add in some tapioca flour and the gelatin. After we've baked this and before we refrigerate it, I'm going to place a little pretzel onto each one because it adds crunch and just a little bit of extra salt to the flavor as well. Now this is optional, but sometimes I've been liking serving this one with a little drizzle of honey. You really don't need much. And I have this really light floral honey, which I like to put on top. And then on the side, we're gonna put a little smidge, a little smidge of low fat whipping cream. All right, let's skip through to dinner. I prepared this bit yesterday. Now, to make your eggplant taste good, if you didn't know this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna line a baking tray and we're going to slice up the eggplant. Now, I've already preheated my oven. I'm gonna put some salt on these first because what salt does is it removes the moisture out of the eggplant and it denatures the protein. So if you've ever had eggplant and it tastes bitter, it's because you need to denature the proteins and you also need to remove the moisture to make sure that it's not just soggy. After it's sat there for 45 minutes, I'm gonna take off the salt and I'm going to add some seasoning. Now I'm going to bake these for a total of 20 minutes, flipping about halfway between. Now, recipes are linked in the description box, or if you want to jump on over to my blog, which is Eat Run List, I have a whole recipe in there, so you can actually find them all in one place. I've got heaps of recipes, I've got calories, I've got macros, I've got that all in there for you guys. I use Squarespace to host both of my blogs, and I've used them for my Eat Run List site for about six years now. They have got fantastic customer service. Whenever I've had to email them something, like if I've stuffed up something somewhere in the back end of it, they get back to me so quickly and they have such a helpful service team. And on top of that, it's really, really easy to create, customize, and also maintain your website. So if you need a web solution for maybe it's your business, maybe it's your art, maybe it's your music, whatever it might be, you can find an awesome solution through Squarespace. They have pre-built templates which you can use and you can customize. They have built-in email campaigns and calendar booking systems. It's all in the one place. 
If you want to give them a go, jump on over to Squarespace and you can start your free trial, build your website, see how you like it. And then when you're ready to launch, jump to squarespace.com slash Rachel Ost, and it will give you 10% off your first Squarespace purchase. So thank you again to Squarespace for very kindly sponsoring today's video. When I served the lamb, I reheated it because that lamb dish that we cooked, that made four portions. So I'm just going to put it with a salad with some spinach, some roasted capsicum, some cherry tomatoes, and cucumber. And then this pronunciation is going to change depending on where in the world you are, but we're using tzatziki for dressing. Okay, I am going to eat this while we finish watching Stranger Things. Mitch has never watched it. Okay, I'll leave details linked in the description box, but jump on over to my blog if you want some more easy recipes. Um, I'll put these ones up on there as well so you can find them. If you made it this far, tell me in the comments what your favorite dessert is. I already told you guys mine, if I had to have a dessert. Okay, I'm actually going to go now and eat this one. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!